I close my screen on Zoom or so that I could see my notes? Um, you can just oh, put escape. it. Thank you, Don. Demi escape. Hongan. Demi escape. Hongan. Hongan. The ponala diki kinai screen. Okay. All right. Is the is the man live yeah. here? Okay. This my seat. All right. Buenas and half a day. Todos hamsu guano hudzo. Ni umeega gi internet half a day. Inano si Michael Luhan bavakwa. Then guawi co-chair pada independent guahan. Then go maguf zunai na men mendadanya hit pogo gi internet pada estina online na general assembly. Sa gi es sa estina mes ko importante gi menagay hongen husen hongi na na kada diha dihan samoro. Kada mes, mes tomoru, logi esti, esti na mes, i mes tomoru, hungan. Ta e e pok todu i tautau, gi esti na isla na paru ma celebra esti i lengua hita i koturata zani i tanau tauta. And so today's General Assembly is mes tomoru focused. And so we have a very exciting topic that we are going to be talking about for language revitalization. Esti un bonito na na panel. Gef Pogu Hungan, we have a special visit by Fauna herself, who created all of the Chamorro people. And so, Gof Magov to Ma Onra, Ayade, Donkulun Onra Esti Naina, Purifina Tonya. And so, we, and so I'm probably, Hungan, I am probably the least interesting person on this panel. So, I will get us started and then, Benai Turisti Man Magohoganai, I Mike, if you know English. Okay. And so this independent Guahan, um, since the pandemic, we have been moving all of our, our normal activities in the community online. And so for more than for a year now, we have been doing our general assemblies online. We used to do them every month in the Chamor village at the main pavilion. We look forward to doing them in public in the community in the future. Uh, but for now we remain socially distanced and hoping that everybody is safe. And everyone, uh, everyone is safe out there. <laughs> and so, uh, Fran. And so we begin each general assembly with the saying of the inafresi. Gini ni mas takilu gi hina stoku, i mas takilum gi korasonhu, then i mas figu, nani na sinyahu, who fres in maisadzu, parabai who protehi, then who defendi, i hinengi, i kotura, I lenguahi, I aivi, I hanam, zani tanu tsamoro. Ni ren shoku, i retsu, ginina zu ustata, esti hua fitma, gi hilu i biblia, zani banderahu, i banderan guahan. And so here is our agenda for today. We've done the inafresi, we're doing the welcoming remarks. We'll have some updates from Independent Guahan about uh, things that you can watch online, things to pay attention to. We will be honoring Sisaina Guinifi, Anne-Marie Arceo uh, for her work in terms of promoting the Chamorro language. This has been a lifelong passion for her. And I'm so glad that she's here with us so that we can honor her for all that she's doing to plant the seeds of the language, to plant the seeds of identity, to strengthen our young people, to be prepared, to face the challenges of the future as proud Chamorros. We're also going to talk about Chamorro language immersion. And we have two uh, young women with us who will be talking about the Chamorro language school, the Harao Academy as well, and, and the Fenezaka and Sinipuk. Afterwards, we will take questions from those of you out there who are watching. Some of you have submitted some already, but put forward. Please put your comments in the questions or send them via Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. Because at the end, after we've done with our, after the panelists and the, the guests have finished speaking, it'll be the chance for you to ask questions um, about, about these issues and any other issues related to language preservation, revitalization, decolonization, and so on. And so this weekend, a collaboration between Tabung Marianas, which is an exciting collective of young Chamorro scholars, 
activists, artists, musicians, Tadung Marianas, they finished um, uh, a trip around the Marianas interviewing people in the Chamorro language about creativity, culture, language, identity. And so they will be having a special concert this Sunday at 7 p.m. live on Fanatsu Facebook. And so this, it will feature Microchild, Top Knots and Slingstones, Chels, Kaya, Pim and Zay, and Joe Garrido. And so this, this back, this is, uh, this Sanhedrin session is meant to sort of evoke uh, memories about concerts in the Kusin and Sanhedrin in the backyard, you know, sort of uh, families gathering together while we are socially distanced, while many of us cannot gather in those same ways, this concert is meant to reflect sort of that love of Chamorro music and that love of community. So please tune in this Sunday, March 28th, 7 p.m. Guam time, live on Fanatsu Facebook. And uh, so independent Guahan, thank you all for tuning in to our General Assembly for the month of March. Uh, just a reminder, Independent Guahan is an organization that seeks to empower the Chamorro people to reclaim our sovereignty as a nation. Inspired by the strength of our ancestors and with love for future generations, we educate and unify all who call our island home to build a sustainable and prosperous independent future. So my name is Francine Napati. I'm the co-chair of EDR with Independent Guahan. And so I'd like to um, introduce our first panelist, who's actually going to be introducing our Magat Talto. Um, for the GA, we decided that we get questions a lot about what does independence look like? How can we decolonize now? And so we shifted to honoring someone who um, does this work already in the community. So our first panelist is actually the daughter of our Maga Tauto. And so as the daughter of um, Anna Marie Arceo, a longtime advocate of the Chamorro language and the founder of Chief Corral Academy, Guam's first Chamorro immersion school, Angelana Sablon grew up in a household where the rule was Finut Samoroha. Though she did not realize it at the time, this would be one of the greatest gifts her and her siblings could receive as children of Guahan. Angelana has been a part of Chief Harao Academy since its beginning um, in, 2008, in 2005, when she was just 12 years old. Since then, she has served in many roles with the organization from adjudanti, snack lady, bus driver, administrative assistant, and everything in between. In 2016, she took a short break from Harau to pursue her associate's degree in visual communications and marketing at the Guam Community College. Angelana believes that knowing her language and being able to communicate in her mother tongue has provided her a strong sense of self, a deep connection to her ancestors and an unshakable foundation to grow and thrive as a young Chamorro woman. Driven by her desire to pay this same gift forward to new generations of Chamorros, Angelana currently serves as the president of Chief Harao Academy, where her goal is to use her knowledge of Chamorro language, experience in language immersion, and skills in marketing to drive the organization forward and continue its work in Chamorro language revitalization. While realizing her responsibility to language revitalization as a daughter of Guahan, Angelana also fulfills her passion in graphic design in her personal business, Second Wave Creative, where she provides design solutions for local purpose-driven organizations. Please welcome Anna. independent Guahan, na in kumbira pagu. Sanasina opportuna dot for the Vincuentos that been apati for a sea sinny book. Sen, 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 Benedosuzo, Pagnadia, Pada by who introduce you, my get tauta, Pada Estina in net non hinerat. I am extremely proud and honored to introduce our Maggot Tauta for this General Assembly. Um, truly a woman who has committed her life to Tomoru language revitalization and education. Uh, the founder of Chief Harao Academy and current administrator of the Kumashani Tsunotsamoru Zan, Sina Nahu, Sisaina Gunifi, Anna Marie Arceo. Growing up with her grandmother, Nanan Biha to her, the seed of Sina Gunifi's passion in education and Tsumoru language and cultural advocacy was planted at a very early age. 
This calling was apparent in her days playing on the broken down bus behind grandma's house that she turned into her make-believe classroom where her dreams of being a teacher would come alive. When we were asked to choose a Maga Tauta for today, Fuuna and I both agreed that there was no one more fitting than my mom. Throughout her career, she worked tirelessly towards her dreams of keeping our language alive. Always driven by her purpose, Sainagunifi has served in Guahan's higher learning institutions and at the Guam Department of Education as a Pinotsumoru educator, writer, and publisher. For over 30 years, she has collaborated with local businesses and organizations to build capacity in the language through teaching, through teaching them how to use Finotsumoru in their daily lives. Her journey with the Kumushoni Finotsumoru has now come full circle. In the 1990s, she served as its executive director before its dissolvement and has now returned to the Kumushon as the administrator after her tenure as a president of the, Depart of the Department of Tomoru Affairs, I Departamento in Ikauha Winahan Tomoru. Sidus Maasi Animu Hagahu. Of na benedosu estiza na omedi kiprena tempo na para tefanhita guini na ora zen hago animo zen si fauna ni famago en hamzu guini gi otu na generation ni kumakad gamo na i hafa en fanagui hamzu. It's amazing, you know, when I look back at the years when you were born, Anna and fauna, your dad and I worked at the commission fena tomorrow. Years ago, I was uh, 26, young 26 as a director. And we both made a commitment and a pact that we would drive our purpose by first starting with our children and teaching our children. And, and that way, there's no questions about how we would move forward in this, not knowing that it will come to this day. So um, uh, it's a it's a amazing moment. It's a miracle in time. So. Um, uh, first of all, I wanted to say Sidus Masi to Independent Guahan, but Estina Patinidad, Gof Donkuluna Bedishoans, and now Middi, who sent Agradesi, Estina Kinimbida, but Miguel Telu, Haguz, and Si Fran, Si Lola, and Toru e Tau Tau e Independent in Guahan. Malaguzo by Tetuan by Unai Donkulunasidus Masi. I have never really, in all my presentations, had the opportunity to uh, uh, say really Sidus uh, Masi um, to the people that really helped me through this journey. I wouldn't have been able to do it without them. I, I didn't do it by myself, definitely. Um, and like anything, when you know, you something great is going to happen you, and nobody can do it alone, you know, without Estige Kuturata, you know, Pata Fanhita, Tumogui, Toru do Hafa, Pus, Parayasa Guauds, and Tori Famagonhu, Namangagi Paraguan, Chi Toru Esti, Siana Hinano, and Gunifi, Parasina Nanta Tau, and Imanet Luhu, Put Toru is Sinapotin Mizu. Um, Paratori Manai Nahu, you know, our, my sinus uh, professionally, Neo Masgayanzu, and we must be Chenta Onus, Ne Estina Sotu, then Parimangatongu, Zani Familian Horausia, Niman Manhongi, Ne Estina Mishon, Zaman Hitamona, Guinina Tempu. Estigi Magahi, Koturata, E. Enatungo, Enafa Maulik, Zan E. Denanya. Iguanaiza para ta, you know, para imeshon motna. Pues Malaguzo be putti a paguna ora half an hour, half an hour to two and or a half a guinea mano estina, nasimiza than minalago para be to two and hurrah. Why did I begin hurrah? Where did, how did it start and where, where did it manifest itself? So I like to uh, go back. I, 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 it wouldn't be right of me not to to mention this because it's it's um, in my generation at least I know the generations are changing, going after coming after me. But at least for me personally, um, I like to say that my entire life was driven by by my purpose to uh, to serve and to to really seek and live my purpose. 
And by doing that, I, 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 when I look back at my history, I have to say that, you know, this, this, uh, uh, the wisdom and the guidance of Sina uh, in three, three uh, uh, levels and that it manifested itself in me. And that first of all was uh, Sina, um, our God, Sizuus, uh, the guidance of our ancestors, you know, spiritually always seeking that. Um, there I sign us also, and then our manana, my elders that have guided me, you know, some of have gone and are still around, continuing to guide me through through my purpose. And I have to say that um, all of it is, you know, uh, because I was driven by Sina, all three at all three levels, um, everything ends up to just be fate, you know, I was never, um, I, I never had to really, uh, um, ask for a job. Everything was always asked of me as though I was guided on this path, uh, through the whole time. Um, first of all, you know, when I look at my history with being raised by my grandmother and my parents who have grounded me in my self-identity and who I am, uh, living on the ranch and, you know, being that child at school that was different from everybody else, at my age, at least, um, you know, knowing all the cultural and uh, um, um, all the cultural values that I was taught at home as far as respect to and being responsible and, and just knowing how to um, live off the land and live life uh, really grounded me, you know, grounded me to the point that um, always was un my identity was unquestionable. From there, I went on to college and, um, you know, uh, landed myself a job with DOE and everything again driven by Sina. There are elders who said, Anne Marie, you should go, you know, get into the Chamorro, you know, studies division. And so I, I went there, was a curriculum writer and trainer. Everything not, you know, not foreseeing how, where this would manifest itself. Um, from there, I went on to, you know, just highlighting those, those times that really led to the creation of Haral and uh, going to Bishop Ben Garner, where I was given the, the freedom, because as a Chamorro teacher, I, I just, you know, I, I'm very, very uh, thankful for the experience that I gained there in the 13 years as a Chamorro teacher and curriculum writer. However, um, because there were so many restrictions, I felt like there were so many restrictions to really uh, executing a curriculum that I felt made me, you know, in my self-identity. And I was lacking in this system of Chamorro studies. It was, uh, it seemed very mechanical. And I just kept searching, you know, what more, what could I do? And so, um, after I left DOE, um, I actually became the director of the Tomorrow Language Commission, thinking, okay, we're going to do it now. <laughs> this is the place we're going to make a difference. But even there, you know, small baby steps, you know, came foot in Tomorrow, which was the organization for all the government agencies. And we did a lot of great things in government. But again, always surface stuff, you know, putting up signs. Um, but, but, but also still making a difference, you know, small, just small steps at a time, changing the names of the agencies to Tsumoru, uh, um, you know, doing all Tsumoru stuff. That was the beginning uh, of the agencies really celebrating Mes Tsumoru and doing everything they do within their departments. And so um, all of it just wonderful times, but still not satisfying that core uh, need to really um, revitalize, to really uh, produce fluent speakers, you know, uh, the way the way I knew I wanted. And so uh, I moved on to Bishop Bum Gardner, where Sister McCulley there invited me to come and teach. And I said, you know, do you have a curriculum? And she says, no, you could do whatever you want. <laughs> I jumped and I said, yes, I can do whatever I want. And it was there that I actually explored the beginning of what I used as a Haral curriculum by really teaching the core of, of engaging language with cultural values and our and cultural practices hands on. And um, so from Bishop, those were actually my two best years of teaching. 
I went into UOG as a, in, you know, with the Micronesian Language Institute. And then um, that everything again, driven by fate, all of these positions and these places I, I, I went to were invitations to come and serve, you know, to come and serve in this, these capacities. Um, and I believe that when I look back at my history now is all fate to get to where we were at now, you know, with, with Chief of Rao Academy. Um, even to, to the point of that, uh, you know, I have to say that it was the strength of my self-identity uh, in my history that was built inside me and so grounded that I wanted this for my children, there was no doubt. And so while going through everything in my career and um, trying to build that on that side, I knew that I had to begin at home. And so I had, you know, um, my son who, uh, Matthew, uh, who I didn't start to model with, but after he turned five, I had Anna, Animo, who's here with us today. Um, and I said, you know, I'm just gonna do this because it was a prime time for me to just try it out. I was exploring and researching, you know, um, new methods of language and I, I discovered immersion. And so I said, okay, I would do it with Anna, right? And begin teaching her as her first language. I was criticized by my parents, my family. They were saying, no, it's not gonna happen. She's going to be lining up in the on the resource, you know, lines for for uh, as a second, you know, English as a second language. It was scary. Uh, I I wasn't sure. I was very unsure, but I took the risk because I was grounded in my self identity. You know, uh, everybody said that uh, she wouldn't be smart. You know, she she would um, go to school and she she wouldn't be ahead. Uh, you know, ahead in class. And so all of these things that were very, very, um, uh, I was afraid. I was really, I had, I had feared that they would be right. And so I was driven to prove them wrong. And so I started with Anna and Animo Dispensa Zulu. Uh, <laughs> you were my first test to see and Matt had to just come along. And so was, you know, my other children, um, AC and Donna, the older ones, they had to just come along and they didn't have a choice. And so um, here we are today, Anna sitting with us, you know, um, Matt's here in Georgia and he's able to speak to his children in Tomoru. He's able to meet other Tomoru people and be proud that he can speak. And without really knowing where it's leading, I just knew it was the right thing to do because of the way I grew up and because of who I was being strong in my self-identity. And so I had to start at home. And then after that came the need to serve, the need to spread this, this love for my people and this uh, um, passion to make a difference. I just felt that that was my purpose. And so I kept driving and driving and I, I just thought, you know, I, um, there's a, I always said that, um, you know, as long as you have your self identity and you know who you are, you're grounded, not just in culture, but in your language and knowing your history, just, you know, uh, being whole uh, in, in all of who you are, that I always said that, you know, um, no one could take this away from you, no matter what, even they, if they put a gun to your head, I always said that. And um, I said, I could say that because I lived it. I lived it all my life where no matter how people put me down, no matter uh, you know, how people judged, I was able to still stand and be grounded, even though it was scary sometimes and I had doubts, I, I was still able to be strong enough to take that risk always and, and uh, be grounded in, in who I was. And you know, this, this feeling is, we, we, see, we see this, uh, um, in, in our history, uh, it's evidence of the survival of our of our nationhood as a people after the many years of colonization. You know, really, um, how is it that after all these years of col being colonized by so many nations, uh, that we as a people and as a nation still exist? 
even though you know there's a lot of work that has been done in the last 30, 40 years to uh, revitalize and restore uh, our our you know um, our nation and our, our language and culture. Um, we're still strong as a people just in who we are, even though there's other influences, we still have our own identity as a people and we've, we haven't lost that. But if we're not careful and we don't pay attention now, that might just slip right through our hands. And so I really want to note how important that is at this time, you know, of our lives and this, this, uh, um, this era of revitalization. And so through all the years going back uh, to how I started Horao or you know, what led to that, um, from that, from the passion, from the drive for my purpose, I just kept seeking. So the first thing I did besides being a Tsumoto teacher and uh, before I went on to being a, a director of Tomorrow Language Commission, I established the group Paraisu, which was the first youth group. So being, you know, with Frank Rabon in Tautotano, I went, I, st I, I stepped off and did a Paraiso, uh, created Paraiso, which is a, a children's dance group. Um, and I thought that that's what it was about, just like everybody does, right? Everybody just doing, all of our youth just find, trying to find their way, trying to find uh, their identity, even in, in the chants and the dances that they do anything to get close to that. And that's where I was trying, you know, that's what I was trying to do with Paraisu. That led, and who would have known, to the production of two albums with, um, as I sat with Joe Pareto, you know, Sijo um, Smasi Joe, Defunto Joe, he's now, you know, uh, watching down on us to continuing this work and uh, where we discovered Stacia Guzman at, at the age of eight, who is still, on this journey with us today, even in her 30s. Um, it's amazing that all the, the songs on these two albums really, really fast forward. It is so applicable to today, whereas before it was just a dream. It was just, you know, so far fetched to reach people. And if you just, you know, listen to any of the songs from these two albums, they were deeply written by Joe, uh, you know, as I sat by his side and uh, I produced the two albums, you know, along with him. And um, today I will share that gift with you at the end of my, uh, my presentation. But then came Horal Cultural Camp. I thought after my work at Bishop, I needed to do something. There's still something more. And so did, I discovered Ahapunanaleo, the immersion school preschool in Hawaii. And I thought, oh, what a big ask. I need a facility. I need this. I, I didn't have the, you know, the um, um, resources to begin. And so uh, I decided to lower the bar and just start with a summer camp and see where it would go. And, um, you know, like I said, tomorrow, I gained a lot of my experience with tomorrow's studies. Um, and I really, really appreciated that. But that also led me to try to seek what was missing even in that system. And that was the support that a curriculum, a cultural, a true cultural curriculum that would build self-identity, that would teach values and culture without you know, um, restrictions from the government. Uh, I just needed to find that. And so uh, I started as a uh, sole proprietor. I didn't even know. And then with guidance again by Saina, uh, I went into a nonprofit and I thought, okay, I was able to partner with the Sinahanya mayor, uh, got a space there for free as a program in, in that community. And we started the Horal Cultural Camp in 2005. So from this purpose to, to serve, to revitalize it really, I couldn't wait for the government. I couldn't wait for anybody to, to make it happen, you know? Uh, I was seeking help, funding, um, it just wasn't happening. And so I thought, okay, I'm just gonna go. They gave me one room at the Sinahanya mayor's office. And I thought that summer, even if I had to be the only teacher to just start, I would, even if I thought, okay, I'll probably get 10 kids because summer camp was in competition, you know, the cultural camp to weave and to learn language and uh, uh, dance and sing in Zamoru. 
was in competition with, uh, you know, Hyatt's uh, uh, <laughs> um, summer camp, you know, all the parents were paying mega bucks going to Hyatt and then the UOG uh, sports camp. That was all, you know, uh, um, my comp the competition at that time. And I thought, I'll probably have about 10, but I'll be okay since, you know, I'm not, you know, I was out of, out of working at that point, um, just delivered my Ina at that time, my third child. And I thought, I, let's, you know, I'm just going to do this for the summer and check it out. Just always, again, trying to seek to make a difference. Oh my, that summer in 2005, what I thought was just going to be 10. And I had Anna who was only 10 years old. Uh, plus my other children just come along with me to help me, you know, set up in this little tiny classroom at the Sinahanya mayor's office. That day that we opened, we enrolled almost 200 students. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I thought we'd have only 10. And uh, I was like, oh, it was unbelievable. I was, I, I was going crazy. I had to call fellow teachers, you know, from Tomorrow Studies to ask them, can you come and help me? Uh, those, you know, teachers that were, were dear to me. And so they came and we had summer, they had to open up four, three, four other classrooms at the Sinahanya mayor's office and clear some areas just for us to make it happen. And so, you know, that happened there for about three, three to four years. And uh, that's where, you know, Horal Cultural Camp, now known as Chief Horal Academy, began. Um, the spirit to live your purpose, to live my purpose, was what drove me all these years, you know, even with many, many sacrifices of, you know, uh, um, making, a, making a living financially, many sacrifices, bringing my children along, you know, to help me build it. Uh, they were by my side, I mean, Anna herself, I had her, you heard her, her uh, introduction. She was everything <laughs> at her house. She was the registrar at the front. And thank God she knew how to speak tomorrow because that was tested through and through with everything. But um, I didn't realize that it would come to today where she would come after me as the president of Chief Aral Academy. And um, I have learned that through this, through this journey, that when things are done with conviction, when things are done with purpose and not self-serving, but to, to, to serve a purpose, a purpose that uh, God gave me, a purpose that our ancestors guided me with spiritually through the years. And to this day being guided by our, our cultural social structure of Sina always being open to their guidance, always understanding that their wisdom is what's going to, to bring fruitation to uh, the future generation and really nothing in it for, for me, everything comes back a hundredfold. Everything came back a hundredfold. And so um, I've always been driven to live my purpose and to make a difference, um, to serve. And so when I've learned that, that it's just back to basic, you know, when you allow something that is greater than you to touch your heart and your soul, it leads to the desire to serve. And when you don't do it for yourself and you do it for a greater purpose, for our peoplehood, for our children. It just all leads to fate, everything. My whole history has been fate. And um, that's, that's what I'm here for, even to this day, being the administrator for the Commission on Infinite Tomorrow, where I was called to serve and actually leave Horao, where I passed it on to Anna now, um, has been amazing to watch. You know, I thought what I thought was, you know, uh, I wasn't, I was very unsure because 15 years, 16 years of building up Horal and putting, you know, my retirement into that. I mean, I literally withdrew my retirement to invest in Horal to start it. Um, that's what is so gratifying is to know that 
um, there's something that I can leave behind and I see it before I had before I'm gone you know I see the the fruits of everything you can set us in your holy to order do pagugi e esteem and not a teen a generation again in the sticky if I'm a gone who para mega sena families and otusia na famagun and so um again for those of us that are on this journey, and there's many of us, I'd, I'd like to just share in my wisdom as Saina now, I've become a Saina, it's amazing. I used to be Patgun and now I'm becoming Saina to this next generation. And I learned really, really well from my Sainas before me about how to be a Saina. Um, I learned that when you have strength in your identity and you seek that, you know, and grow, just keep growing it every day, seek all the resources, no matter what, you know, uh, space you're in right now of, of um, knowing language or culture or history, if you just keep growing that every day, um, you'll become strong in your identity. And from that, you, you'll realize a love for our people and our uniqueness in this whole wide world um, that leads to compassion and conviction. And for me, uh, just dreaming of how to live my purpose. And that's how um, Chief Harao Academy came to be is just that, that uh, determination to find a way to pass this on to the next generation to make sure that it lives the same way I experienced it from my grandmother and my parents who passed it on to me. Um, I'm able to live a very fulfilling life in this manner of knowing who I am and uh, being uh, of a people who are so unique in this whole world with our language, knowing our language that makes us different from everybody else. And so now um, I'd like to leave you with this gift um, of a message from a, one, a song from the album that I produced along with Joe Pareto in hopes that uh, you get, you'll find a sincere conviction, those of you that on this, are on this journey or have not begun, but I hope you find that through this gift of song that you could find a sincerity to serve in humility and love for the sake of our peoplehood and more importantly for our future generation. Here's my gift. <laughs>
Jesus, my icy friend. I hope that I've um, lit a fire in all of you. And uh, I hope that I'm still continuing to serve my purpose even through this, this discussion today. And thank you for really the gift that Harau has given to people here and for, you know, gifting us with the language. And uh, I'd now like to introduce the uh, very product of Anne-Marie's uh, Fino Tomoro hat role in the house, uh, her daughter, Angelana Sablon. She's uh, going to talk to us a bit about the Chief Harao Academy, especially the Immersion Program, uh, because they're one of the first to start a preschool that will filter into Bouna's um, presentation, where she'll talk about Fanny Dawkins' new book. Uh, welcome, Anna. For days, he's with Masi. Spencer, I just have to gather myself a moment. This, he's with Masi. Um, mom, he's with Masi. Now, on nice or esina regalu, he pada by hutungu i fenohu. Za pada by hutungu hazi zo untungu um hutungu na ana man hobinham in nai how maket na na temple. Put for me not some more set so half as a half and a parata if you know some more to other or true for me for not some more to you know team malagos or malagos or by normal you know so pagu na you know the monk luzo the guala kui u keke spia um manu guatu zo gili na lahu huli na you know maga hit dunk luna regalu um you know as in your nice or for scissors masi Sizo Smasi Lakwi, um, before I start my presentation, um, Malago Bisang and Hat Sizo Smasi Pada Toru i Familia and Harao, i Famago and Harao, um, Zen Toru i Tauta, and Iman Manhongi, and Masapopo Ti Harao, um, Ti Sinyaham, you know, Sin Hagu, Mangagi Ham Guni Pagu, you know, Kins, this, oh, Esta Pada, this is Sheti Onyos, Banan Hit, um, the Guanabrai, Tinahong Salapi, Guanabrai, Tinahong Kampu, um, lo Toru Tempu i Sinapotini Kumunadat, then i, um, i Minalagota para Tafanagu i Famagoin, ezu Kumaka Gaham, pues Sizos Masi. Um, so I, I just want to talk a little bit today about um, Harau. We, we just heard um, why, the why behind Harau and, and how everything got started. And so I just wanted to talk a little bit today about. Um, what it is exactly that we do at Harau. Um, so Chief Harau Academy is a nonprofit organization um, and we were established in 2005 and this was in an effort to um, create a stable language uh, learning, a Tsumoru language learning program um, on Guam. So some of the programs that we've developed since 2005, um, starting with the, the Temple and Somnek, our summer camp, uh, we then went on to do an after school program, um, Tempo in Managua, you know, just a little bit more, a little bit more time in immersion, you know, because summer camp was just um, six weeks, right? And, and and there was no tomorrow for the rest of the year. So we did our Tempo in Managua, which is our after school program. And then um, after doing these programs, there was this big, um, this big want from the community from younger adults. And so we started Sogwihat, which is our adult program. And then finally in 2018, uh, we were able to start our first full immersion preschool, the Nenny Academy, um, which I'll, I'm gonna elaborate on a little bit more later. And then in 2019, we partnered with um, the Department of Education to assist them in implementing their immersion program, um, which is really the big dream, right? To have a, a preschool all the way to um, 12th grade uh, immersion program. So this is just the beginning and Funa will talk a bit more about the Fenazakin program later. Um, so yeah, um, Fran, next slide. Um, so Ihinago, our mission at Harao is to promote and perpetuate the Tomoru language and culture through community immersion education and other programs in support of this mission in honor of our past generations and for the benefit of our future generations. 
So today I just wanted to talk um, about immersion as a teaching method and then some of the key factors and the successes that we've had in um, teaching Tsumoru to our students. Um, next slide. Pues Hoffa immersion, what, what exactly is immersion? We keep saying immersion, immersion. Um, so what is it? Um, immersion is a language learning approach in which the target, only the target language, um, in our case, Finotsumoru is used throughout all of the teaching in the classroom. So students are immersed in Tsumoru and they spend about 90% of their day learning Tsumoru in a natural environment. Um, really the only time we use English with the students is if we're communicating with them about like, safety, right, for safety purposes. So they work towards fluency through having natural conversations um, with people around them. So it's not that they're only being taught Tsumoru, they're being taught in Tsumoru, right? And they're surrounded by everything Tsumoru. Um, and like I said earlier, we use the immersion approach in all of our programs, but today I just wanted to elaborate on the Nenny Academy because it's the all day program, uh, immersion program that we have. And this is where the students get um, the most exposure to Fino Tsumoru. Next slide. So we use immersion, low half a time at, you know, how, how are we implementing it? And what are the things that make what Haral's doing successful? So we found that some of the major factors of our success um, with the language immersion programs are our environment, um, connection, and family. Next slide, Frank. So environment. Um, as you see here in the pictures, um, when teaching language, especially a second language um, through immersion environment is very critical. You know, at first when the students, when the students first start in the program, they're very shy and very uncomfortable because of course everything is new, right? This is a brand new, first of all, they're just starting school, right? They're three and four year olds. Um, and then they're, they're hearing a whole new language that they don't understand. So in the beginning, it's very shocking for them, right? And so we really strive to create um, a warm and a nurturing environment for them so that they can feel safe and then they can learn in a comfortable space. Um, sort of like, we like to say, we like to recreate like non mbs house, like going to non mbs house, you know, it's very comfortable, it's very relaxed, um, but you learn things at non mbs house, right? Lots of, lots of things. Next slide. And then connection. At Harao, students are not only immersed in Finotsumoru, but we also make it a point to immerse them in our values, our traditions, and our history. Um, it's important for both language learning and self-identity building, like Sainigunifi mentioned, to help students um, connect what they're learning in the classroom, you know, with language to what they're actually doing in their daily lives. So this is why we integrate activities like weaving, dancing, um, chanting, cooking, uh, you know, the coconut, coconut um, husking and, and grading and all of those things, because these are the things that really help develop those important connections to our culture that help foster, you know, fluency in our students. Um, as you see here, you know, Talaza, and, and they have such a great time. And again, we're using these activities um, also as tools to, to teach them the language. They're, they're just vehicles, you know. Next slide. And then lastly, family. Um, this is probably the most important aspect. This is the major key, I think, um, in Haral's success um, is, is full family immersion is what we call it. Um, because when parents bring the language home, the time spent exposed to Finotsumoru is increased greatly. And you know, like anything, um, the longer you do it, the more exposed you are to it, you know, the easier it's going to be to learn and, and the more you're going to retain. So when parents enroll in Haral, they're not only enrolling their child, they're also enrolling their whole family. And this is something that we, we make clear in the beginning um, to make, to help parents realize that, you know, learning tomorrow in this way is a, is a commitment. It really is. Um, it's going to take a lot of time. It's, it's going to take a lot of effort, um, but we really, um, encourage parents to, to commit to their children's progress by engaging with them in Somoru at home. 
And so it's a, we understand that, you know, not all parents are going to know how to speak to Moru and not all parents are going to know how to sort of facilitate this immersion environment in their home. So to help bridge the gap um, between Harao and home, we do what we call Esqualan Manyaina or the, our parent classes and also Ha'an and Familia or family days. So these are spaces that we create where parents and families um, can come together to, to learn. Um, they, we, we try to match the, the parent class curriculum to what the kids are learning so that when they go home, um, they can continue the learning at home. Parents also use this space to share their experiences, um, both uh, successes and fr frustrations, you know, in, in this journey of language learning. And they build this sense of community and they encourage each other, you know, um, especially for adults, at least, you know, just from what um, parents have shared with us, it's, it's a big daunting thing to learn a second language um, as an adult, you know. And so these, these family spaces that, that we try to create at Harao and that also parents create, in, you know, themselves they kind of create this support system for language learning, for Tsomoru language learning. Um, and this really, really helps their fluency. We've seen many families come through Harao. Um, this, this photo here in the middle um, that you can see with this larger family, these are the Lizamas. They have been part of Harao for, I want to say over 10 years now. Um, their oldest son who's graduating this year, Tobin, um, he's been with Harao since he was in elementary. He was in our after school program. And now his youngest brother, Sindalu, he went through our Nanny Academy program. And now he's in the program at, um, with, with DOE in Sinipok. He's, he's Sinophonus student. So this big family commitment here, these students are all fluent. And this family has, has really made it a point to make Tomoru important to them. And that's the key is the commitment from the family, you know? Um, people always ask, you know, what is it that Harao does? What is Harao doing? And really, we're just facilitating. We're just facilitating the real learning and the real, um, you know, the real fluency happens at home when families really commit, when they make the commitment. And that's the difference because we've seen we've seen families that you know um, come to Harao because they want their children to learn, but they're not they're not willing or they're not in the space yet to make the commitment. And so they don't see as much progress. So we know that, that having family support is truly um, a, a big factor. Even grandparents, like all the way out, you know, when you have um, the grandparents supporting the grandkids, it's just, it's really beautiful to watch. It's beautiful to watch. So next slide. So when we take all of these things that we talked about, you know, the environment, um, the connection and family, and we implement them all simultaneously, we really create this space where students can begin to live Fino Tsumoru. You know, they begin to hear and see and feel the language um, in its natural environment. They're not just sitting in front of a chalkboard, you know, learning Fino Tsumoru. They're, they're, it's in their, everyday, in their everyday lives, right? And so this helps the students to learn the patterns and the structures of the language sort of subconsciously. And then this ultimately leads to fluency and a strong self-identity, you know? And I think that's why children learn so fast is because they're learning this structure subconsciously. They're not, um, they're not worried about the grammar and the spelling and the why, why does it like this? And, you know, they're not worried about those rules. They're just speaking. No, and that's really how we learn the best. If you think about, um, if you think about how you learned as a child, like your your parents didn't sit you down in front of a chalkboard and and say, you know, this is the word for bottle. No, they just give you the bottle and they say this is a bottle, and you learn that it's a bottle, right? And so that's really how immersion works. It's it's this. Um, ultimate sort of surrounding yourself in the, the thing that you're trying to learn. Okay, next slide. So the, the question, right, is so komototsuzo, you know, komototsuzo, does immersion work? Does it work? And I'm just going to go ahead and say hungen. <laughs> hungen, it works. Um, I was thinking about this today, and it's funny because, you know, Sainaguni, if you mentioned it in her 
in her talk and it was sort of, um, I realized that we were sort of her first immersion students, you know? Um, she likes to say a lot that I, we, I, you know, and our, my siblings, we were her, her guinea pigs, that's, that's what she calls it. And it doesn't, you know, it might sound terrible, it might sound like a terrible thing for a parent to do, um, but really I, I am so thankful that she took that risk and she followed her gut and, you know, and, and went ahead and did that, even with all of the pressure that she was having not to, because, you know, of all the opportunities that it's afforded, you know, both me or all of me and my siblings, you know? And so people always ask the question, does immersion work and, and how does it work and stuff? And so when parents come to Haral, they have the same concerns that people had back then, you know, um, when I was born and my mom decided to teach me Tsumoru for the first time. You know, there's this mentality, Guayastina Hinasu, you know, that somehow English is superior to Tsumoru. And I know that that's happened, you know, because of all the colonization that, that we've endured, right? But I just want to say right now that it's not. English is not superior to Finotsumoru. No language is more superior than the other, but as Tomorus in, in ourself, our mother tongue, that's our, that's our strength. And so that's something that we have to hold on to, you know? And so going back to the presentation, um, parents say, you know, is my child gonna have a hard time? You know, cause they're coming to the preschool and they ask, is my child gonna have a hard time when they go to kindergarten? You know, are they gonna know their ABCs and their, you know, how are they supposed to communicate? And personally, you know, I didn't learn how to speak English until I was five, you know, when I started school, because again, at home, there was no, no Finno English, you know, ever. And, um, you know, but I actually, I still, I still made it into the pre-gate program and the gate programs um, in elementary. And okay, yeah, they had to test me in Finno Tsumoru because I didn't know English, um, but that didn't mean that I wasn't able to think and it wasn't, it didn't mean that I, I had a hard time learning. It just meant that I communicated in a different language. That's all it meant, right? And parents say things like, your child's gonna have a hard time learning English and they need to know English to be successful, right? That's, I, I, that's something I still hear to this day is that we need English to be successful. And Hungan, you know, the transition was, interesting you know from tomorrow to to learning english at school and you know i used words like fish tank and you know thinkative right these were my words that i made when i was trying to transition you know uh from from tomorrow at home to english at school um but learning tomorrow definitely didn't hinder my growth um in any way actually um i feel like it was it is um, a superpower, you know, for lack of a better word. Um, I always felt like I, I had an advantage in, in my learning because I could um, think in two different perspectives. And, you know, I don't know, maybe Fuguna can talk on this later. I don't know if it's just me, but, you know, when it comes to like critical thinking and problem solving, I feel like it comes a lot easier because I, I sort of think in Somoru and the values and the, you know, the, the um, how do you call it? I don't, I don't know how to explain it fully, but it's like I had these two different worlds to think with and that made everything easier for me, right? And then another thing that parents say is, oh, they're gonna have a hard time adapting in social environments, right? I don't think I had a hard time, my, my if anything, uh, I was the opposite. According to my teachers, you know, my, my social abilities were not an issue. I mean, they were an issue, but it wasn't that I was too social and I was over talkative. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't, right? I had too much to say. And so I guess really what I'm saying and tying it all together with, um, you know, my experience as a, a, um, a first language speaker in Somoru and immersion as a teaching method. I just want to share that, you know, if anyone listening, if you have hesitations about um, 
affording your child that opportunity or or even yourself about learning tomoru or prioritizing tomoru over english i just want to say that there's you know there's not there's no reason to have those hesitations there's studies that show that um bilingual children far surpass their peers you know in in school the their peers who only know one language and even more so children that are bilingual who know their mother tongue have the potential to be even more successful so again this all goes back, back to what Saina Guniti was talking about um with self identity all right so all of that said i i just want to end my presentation um here and i'll end it by sharing a video of our nanny students and a glimpse into what the future of our language could look like if we just work hard and continue supporting our island's efforts uh, towards language revitalization Hey, 
Sinana. Then Haji. Sitata. Then Haji. Sitalai. Ahana, Ahana di Utsa. It's every part of the song in one of the views then. Come on, I'll be more long. Ah, yeah. What's up, girl? Papa Debbie and Papa Debbie and Usa Gi Gi Ethan Pasikiti Fort Gunham. Ija Kamu. Ija Kamu. Zan. Pat. Tohu. Tohu. Zan. Papa Oshima Sinyan Usa. E. Papa Ezia Tatanti Lumu. Pazu. Oh, Pazu. Kogwa Pazumu? Ah, hungry. Oh yeah. Kolo Rosa. Kolo Rosa. Oh wow. Kamangi cerealis? Ada tak apa Loka dasi iku and tiga hingga hati loka wow pati iku hati loka hati hati ko si iku kalau loka si iku ahi ko hati ko si sana kore ahi loka dan hati ko hingga malu hati ni malai jago di sana doa. Ezuhat,我是做马戏。嗯，婆弟哈，奶奶，他们做阿奴，我是做呢。嗯，video，我是去嗯，intiguana，我买个红眼，我买个那托托莫呢，罗，是罗奇，我买个那托托，你，你，
Uh, I just started at the immersion school. Uh, my first year, I started in August. Before that, I taught Chamorro language and dance at GW for two years. And um, before that, I've just been dancing in Inet and Pagu. And it, it's funny because I feel like all our stories, you know, my dad always told me when I was younger, Huna, Azuda si si say Auntie Anne Marie, Azuda gwe sauna li hurao, say ilaku ilaku ahi, ilaku ahi malaku to be baila. I just want to dance only. I don't want to do that. I I just want to hang out with my friends. <laughs> I just want to be normal, lucky, no. <laughs> and then look, Atena Pagu, Atena Pagu, where I am. <laughs> I was only delaying the inevitable. <laughs> I'm just laughing hearing her story because my dad worked with uh, Saina Gunifi at the commission and, and the same story too with Anna. My dad told me that, that I, would, I too was, you know, the guinea pig that he didn't really speak Chamorro growing up. So he wanted to learn from me and my brother, Hurao. So, you know, he decided he'll raise us to speak Chamorro so that we can end up teaching him. <laughs> and, you know, that's how it happened. You know, Mangang Siha, and they, they planned this all along. You know, this this the uh, 19 Tanaki. They knew what they were setting us up for. <laughs> it's just funny. Um, so, so I taught at GW, and then uh, I stopped for a while to pursue my master's degree at UOG. And... And at the time when the immersion school launched for, for GDOE, when they started the program, I was still uh, in school, so I couldn't join right away. I knew I had to finish first before I could join. And, you know, and right, like a month after I graduated, okay, let's do so. <laughs> you know, I told her I'm ready to work, ready to, you know, work for the mission and, you know, front lines up, front lines up, <laughs> mission. Um, and I really, growing up, I really didn't expect to be here. I didn't, I never even thought about it, nothing. And then as I got older and I did, you know, UOG and all of that, it, it just, it taught me how important the language is. And I feel like my, so my thesis for my master's was in Chamorro language and, and going through that whole process, going through academia, you know, I didn't like that that I had to learn about my language from textbooks and classrooms. I really, I was like, why am I learning it from them when I have my own people, you know, right next door, my non and Biha, who could teach me everything I wanted to know about the language. You know, why do I need to be in a classroom to learn about it? And going through my master's program, I realized that that my Manamku, the, you know, Imanyaina Sia, Toru Gwini, that they know more and they know everything that I could ever want to know. And, and then I realized that that I need I need to do something for for my my children, my future children. And I feel like do, uh, working for the immersion school, I realized like this is my way to give back. This is my way to help my future children. And and you know, I'm just I'm just like a vessel, and I just need to pass it on to them. I feel like that's all I am is everything I learn. I need to give to them. And, and then I realized, oh my gosh, I, there's so much I don't know yet that I need to teach them. Like, for example, okay. Okay, don't, uh, don't shame me, Lo. I don't know how to cook in tomorrow. I don't know how to cook tomorrow. <laughs> only, only, you know, fried rice and stafals and tenek tech, right? The triple threat. So <laughs> I only know that. And I realized, OMG, how can I teach, you know, these kids, these Siniput kids, you know, about being a, a true tomorrow and I can't even cook tomorrow food. So I started learning how to cook. I just mastered red rice last week and my family said it's good. So we're gonna test run it at our Easter celebration. So I hope everyone approves of my red rice. And then um, I learned steak too, which ended up making me sick. So it was a mistake. <laughs> but, but it was good, but you know, I just left it out and the, you know, whatever. But I just realized that there's so much I need to learn so that I could become a better teacher. And, and cooking is one of them. I just, I realized too, that when I was sick from the mistake that, you know, I don't even know tomorrow omelet, tiutungo put omelet. And I'm like, I could have just healed myself if I knew what plants to get, but no, you know, I have to go to a doctor and tell them my problems for them to heal me. So I'm like, okay, 
I need to learn Chamorro medicine so I can heal myself whenever. And then I could teach the kids Chamorro medicine. I need to learn how to cook food so I could teach the kids how to cook all these foods. Because we, we did an activity yesterday about what are their favorite foods. It's a pura hat, pizza, pizza, spaghetti, dahu pizza, dahu spaghetti. I'm like, oh, I'm just... <laughs> okay. So I need to teach them Chamorro food, uh, Chamorro medicine. Then, okay, I don't know how to weave too. And I feel like becoming a teacher just placed all this burden on me to, you know, become the best teacher for them and to teach them everything that I didn't learn. And that's the way I see it now is no one taught me to cook, you know, in tomorrow. No one taught me how to weave. No one taught me about the medicine. So I need to be this for them so that they, they don't grow up thinking, how come no one ever taught me this? And, um, you know, that's, that's kind of the way I've seen my, my, purpose I guess in life is just passing on all the knowledge I can so that they don't grow up with things that I didn't have and and I just I love that video that Anna shared because they are they're so funny and man they really are just today and she shared Tatsalani oh my god today Tatsalani non-stop non-stop see Tatsalani I can't help but laugh she's always like Sus Maria, Sus Maria. like every five minutes and you know that that's what it's like being with these, you know, Chamorro kids is that they they're so used to it being so natural. They're just in their natural environment. And, you know, and it's really sad that, that me and Anna didn't grow up with that, where we had to hide that part of us because we want it to be normal. And I it really took a lot for me to break out and finally even speak Chamorro in public. Like it took me teaching at GW at 22 years old to finally be comfortable speaking Chamorro in public, just because it, it's so it's so rare to find that people really treat you like like you're like a, a circus act almost. You know, like they want to see you perform the language, and that was really hard for me to deal with as a speaker. And I know Anna mentioned this before because we talked about this before. Is that People really see us like as, you know, a performance. They just want to see the language and, and hear it. And they're like, oh, wow. And then that's it, you know. Um, but one, one thing that really was one of like the, the, oh, wow, the aha moment in teaching immersion was um, the students. So the students, again, Fino Tomoru had Gihalami class. And so even when the other students speak English, They'll, they'll correct them, right? They'll get mad at them. They'll, they'll say, ahi, finu tomorrow. And that, that, that moment, I feel like I wasn't prepared for. I mean, I know Anna and Saina Gunifi probably saw this so many times, but seeing like, okay, growing up with grandparents and hearing their stories about how they were forced to speak English and, and how they were punished to speak English. And then now seeing the opposite where the, you know, back then kids would, would snitch on each other if they spoke tomorrow. And now the kids are, you know, getting mad at each other for speaking English. And I think that was such a beautiful moment that I just kept thinking like, I really live to, to experience both these generations of our grandparents and their trauma with tomorrow. to our students now, you know, like this is the healing that's happening that Saina Gwinifi, you know, this is the healing. She's healing our community, so empty, you know, she's really healing us. And I see it in the classroom and, I was just so, I didn't even expect the other kids to, to, to get mad at each other when they speak English, but they do. And it's just so beautiful. I, okay, so I'm free Kumati. So. <laughs> it's just so beautiful because I can't believe my, my grandma used to get punished for speaking tomorrow. And now I have students who punish each other for speaking English. You know, like what progress we've made as a people. And you know, all thanks to our Maga Tautau, Saina Gunifi. And I always tell her that, you know, I feel like such a little Puzito is next to her. Like I haven't even done much yet. I just started and, and Saina Gunifi is this, you know, master Punidera and I'm just a little Puzito following along, you know, <laughs> eating eating the crumbs she left behind so I can learn. <laughs> that's, that's the way I see it. And, and I'm just, I'm so grateful to be a part of this panel and to honor Saina Gunifi because you know, seriously, Guiza had Salani Motnaham, you know? Without her, Sempri taught at Salan. Well, because of her, you know, Guahat Salan Potgu, you know, Tigagi Hamgi Kaskal, Guahat Salan. Okay, that, that's all I wanted to share. Sizus Maasi Tatlu, and I, I hope it was informative. Sizus Maasi Puuna, and 
I feel like we just went through Fauna's comedy hour. <laughs> no. uh, so we don't have much time for Q and A, but I do feel like it's very important. A lot of questions kept coming up about how to get the kids into these programs. So Fauna, I know you're part of um, Fanadzak and Sinipuk, which comes from the Guam Department of Education. And then Anna and Anne-Marie, you guys run the Harau Academy. So if you could kind of speak to how to get the kids into the Nenny Academy, they're also asking about like cost and how many students per class. And then Fauna, if you could kind of give people a better idea of how to um, connect to GDOE and get the students enrolled in Fanadzaken. And Fanadzaken right now is only kinder and first grade. So your kids would have to be entering those grades in order to get enrolled. We can start with now, since that's yeah. <laughs> oh, let's see, Anna. Okay, Guahu. Okay, we are now. Okay, Guahu. To turn to turn to see Anna, so in any academy, pues manhano para isinipo that explica te manu na manhita. Okay. Guaha man dinanya i horao. Then I find a can see me books and do we man man he hit that odu do guaha a manera and get man hobin man harlem guinea pues naman hano hana no ha para e e sini book pus bwenti malik matatun and see honor tamanu man harlem gi e dot dress on you spues una on explica tamanu you know half a bit of the money e curriculum gay sini book again to just my see. Okay. Um, Sizo Smasi told us how to into the Sao Mizu Gi Harao. So, um, currently enrollment is is currently closed. Um, we actually because of COVID, we weren't able to uh, open enrollment last year, so we didn't have any students. Um, which is why right now we're just working on um online programs. Low for next year, we do plan hopefully. Um, you know our island situation will remain the same and or, or improve. Um, we, we plan on opening enrollment for next school year. Um, so uh, children have to be three and there we take three and four year olds if they're, um, they have to be potty trained, right? No. Um, and then, so enrollment will probably open in, um, I wanna say May, May or June early. Um, and we have all those details on our website. It's harauacademy.com. The cost is there. Um, and then also you can, we, we don't have open enrollment right now, but we have made a um, sort of a newsletter that you can sign up to so that we can send you updates as soon as enrollment is open. Um, tuition right now, I can just say tuition is uh, 450 a month. Um, and then that program runs um, all year long. Um, if you guys are interested in before, um, before Nanny Academy starts, which starts in August, um, we do have, um, our Tempo Somnac that we we're hoping that we can hold. Um, and that'll be obviously in the summer. And so we'll open enrollment for that also soon. All that information is on, on the website. Um, and also to, just for the Nenny Academy, to mention for the Nenny Academy, our, our class sizes are no more than 10 usually. Um, we'll have to see with COVID if we're able to keep that number. Um, hopefully we can. Um, so. Yeah, as you have. If if anyone has any more questions, um, you can either um, go to our website or um, message us on social media. Um, and then a good email address is admin at harauacademy.com. If you have any inquiries, um, you may send them there and, and we'll assist you. Jesus Masi Anna. so for the Sanip book, it starts at kindergarten. And, and we're located at PC Lujan. So yeah, it's right now we only have a kindergarten and a first grade program, but the program builds as the students progress. So next year there'll be a second grade and then first grade and then hopefully a kindergarten again. Uh, I believe you can just contact the admin at PC Lujan and let them know you'd like to enroll your child into the immersion. And I know the, the biggest thing is that this, the parents also have to commit to learning the Chamorro language too, the Escuela en Mañana. So I know they may, I think they make you sign a contract to show that you know, you're, you're committed with your child to learn tomorrow too. 
And then from there, uh, the tumoral studies department at DOE will contact you and then you know set up appointments about enrolling your student. Uh, a question also came in about um, Harau's Temple in Somnak. Do you guys plan to start that? Maybe not this year, or are you planning to do it for maybe summer 2022? Actually, we we were looking we were looking into doing summer this year. We we really would like to. Um, we're working out the details of that to you know maintain safety and things like that. Um, if if any, um, we're looking at maybe doing just the Nenny summer if, you know, if for numbers, if numbers don't allow us to do our full um, three to three to 11 year old program, then we might just do a three and four year old program um, with with the Nenny. So again, we'll, we, we'll announce all of that on our social media. Um, it's just going to depend again on the island situation. Um, but again, like I said, if, if you if you want to be kept updated with our programs and and the new enrollments, then feel free to sign up to the newsletter and, and we'll make sure that we put you on the list to get updated. Thank you. I'm sure every, you guys will probably get like a flood of calls about enrollment in, into both programs. Uh, but we actually do have time for one question. So there were a few questions that came up really early um, about tomorrow music. A lot of people were asking, how can we sort of encourage Chamorro musicians to make original music instead of just translating it from English? Or even how can we encourage young Chamorros to record music if they're not necessarily fluent in the language? And then of course, this favorite question that almost every Chamorro gets nervous about answering, but the people watching want to know what's your favorite Chamorro song? So whoever wants to jump in. Diana sagwa gitala gi sentati. Was den den dera gwe. Hago fenana na ana. Animo. Oh, para bi song and you know, we make a tau tau fenana na. Hago dedi. Hago. Hi. Para guahu a masdahu i asaina tu tumo. Kosina on danden saina. Animo. Okay, Um man, you know, there's just so much music. Mega na na dandan ni ezi ana session tizo different is by dependi at komalago bi gupo za bi baila par komalago bi tristi za bi karti za you know dependi at lo um content new ek mo mega pago i um no ni ezi no content i za new hazi kuentos so for example as that's um my on repeat right now. So um, to answer the question about how we can encourage, um, and I think this is important, so Sizo Samasi for that question, because it actually leads to you know, other things about how we can encourage young speakers or, or people who don't speak Tomoru or even people who speak Tomoru to write original Tomoru music. Um, I think the first step really is for us as a community to be open to new learners, first of all. Um, I think that a big issue in our community um, is that a lot of people are ashamed. You know, they're ashamed to speak because they don't want to. They don't want to be wrong. They don't want to make a mistake. And you know, in our culture, it's just our culture to tease, right? But I've been and to to be mean to each other, even if we don't mean it to be hurtful. Um, but I just wanted to say that is that I I think as a community we have to be better and we have to be a little more gentle and a little more kind with our new learners. And especially people that put out music, you know, uh, if I'm being honest, I'm, I'm one of the first people to when there's a new song, I, I almost immediately judge it, right? That's just the name. But then I have to remember, you know, at least, at least they're making music, it's out there, right? And so then I bring myself back. So I know it's all in our, our, our nature to, to do those things. But I just wanted to say that. And, you know, if anyone ever needs help, if you if you're an artist, and you want to create some more music, but you don't know, you know, you can always come to us, Harau, you know, Saneguinifi, the Commission. There's resources out there to help you translate your music. 
and you know we can go from there it's it's really about making a way you know like Sani Gunifi says just it's all we have uh when you Anna go Malik go Malik if you not move everything Anna said is is correct and honestly me too guilty what a tomorrow song comes out I'm like she <laughs> You know, but but then that's my first thought. But second thought, oh, sahat saksagi. You know, that's the most important. Is okay. The first one is you know your original. Your second one is oh, okay when you finally process. You know, that's that's what I love. Even though people do, and I'm one of them, like to judge tomorrow music. At the same time, it's like wow. At least they're trying. You know, at least they're trying, and that's that's the way I see it. The paraguahu imas dahu na dandan pat denderu. See Walter Mangotnya, go down. Wait, do you think I'll put it down? Down, yeah, but but Guiza, Imatanya, no, no, I know how. Okay, send my Google. Um, friend and Miguel, thank you so much. Buy who aumenta um golf money, no ST put it down, down, down. You know, and you get to need to hone ya para ta guaiza, para ta fatinas guinaiza para i tinau tauta, then hardy hit. It's get money. Lo malagozo be potis and hamzu. I want to share with everyone that um, uh, you know, there's work going on out there on on revitalization. Now is the time. It's now or never. Um, just alone at the commission, and there's so much work, you know, the independent Guahan at the university, uh, um, there's so much going on. GCC is launching a new tomorrow program, uh, which I'm a part of also. Um, GDOE is just, just many efforts already just for revitalization. And so I, I just, I mean, I would, I would be remiss not to mention that uh, at the commission, which is the reason really I was uh, uh, invited to come to join the commission to help in this in this venture in this journey, uh, I think I feel like it's a hurrah in the government. You know, <laughs> it took hurrah to go to the government to try to establish things there too. Um, but our second Fenamta, which Fran is also uh, very much a part of with me, our team of Manyanes, which we have to treasure. Uh, that we take for granted very often in their knowledge and the wisdom that you know they have to give. Uh, um, I think we've never come to a, we've come to a moment where we could be uh, uh, we can put aside our differences, but also be very honest and very very transparent. You know, I'm watching them and they're so transparent and very deliberate about where we need to take this and the passion that drives them. Uh, um, is is gets crazy sometimes but at the end of the day you can appreciate where they want to take us and what they want to leave behind as commission members and so with that you know we have the revitalization center the second fanamta which is housing the uh Nagat, commission Nagat, the place names which we're trying to restore also we have many projects going on we've updated the orthography uh, we've created a, a children's uh, Pictionary book. We we're partnering with many entities, including uh, Omedzek Tsamoru out in the community. We, we just have so many projects going on for revitalization, all led by our sinus. And same way again, passing it on to me and to the next generation. And, and we're doing this, you know, it's happening. And, and um, even with all the differences, we're going with the drive for our purpose in each of our our individual talents and bringing that to the table to make it happen. So, you know, Biba tomorrow, <laughs> it's, we're, we're there. It's going to be so much easier for the future generation, um, you know, as we continue to work at it and, and leave behind for our children what, um, what to know who they are and just, you know, uh, building on that. And um, like our signers have talked about nation building and, uh, uh, sovereign cultural so sovereignty those concepts today are so new to many but we have to build on that and continue that journey uh, the work of Saina in our lives and the wisdom is so so important I can't tell you uh, that's all the only thing that has guided me really throughout this journey but we have to be open 
we have to be, you know, uh, humble because that's the kutura. So if we're Padgan and we know there's a Saina, we have to stay in our places and just, you know, and um, thank you all for tuning in tonight um, at the Independent Guahan General Assembly for the month of March. Uh, please join us for our next one, which will be Thursday, April 29th. And uh, we'll let you all know what the topic is and you'll look out for the flyer. And thank you all for joining us tonight. Have a good night. Adios. Sidus Masi. Adios. Sidus Masi.